Taking a look at the MIG PAC 180 Lincoln electric welder that I bought from Canadian Tire, I'm going to show you some of the things that came with the welder and some features on it and just a general overview to help you get started when you buy yours. A couple of things that I found that uh, I think might help you as you set yours up. So first of all, you'll know the front of the, th uh, the welder here, that's your on-off switch. This sets the speed of your wire, how fast it comes out. And this sets your heat setting for how hot or cold you need the weld. <coughs> what temperature that the weld is to be set on, you just click there. When I plugged in my gun, there's two O-rings on this uh, cable. And the first time I didn't push hard enough. So make sure you push hard enough that you feel it go clunk and it'll be in. Then secondly, on this gun wire, there's this fitting right here. It plugs in as well. You have to turn it to you find out where the prongs go. There's four prongs, holes, four prong holes and two prongs. I just guessed where it was and I tightened it up. Your ground cable comes with it and that goes in underneath here. <coughs> and that's tightened on with the wing nut <coughs> on the inside. Give you a look at the ground clamp they send. Nice heavy ground clamp. It uh, takes a pretty good grip on whatever you're going to put it on. You'll have to thread it through like I did here. It goes underneath, inside the handle. Tighten it on with the nut. And this here is what it's all about. This is the gun end. You have your trigger on the bottom. You just pull your trigger and the wire will start uh, coming out and welding. This here is for <coughs> the non-gas welding spool. And uh, you'll be changing these tips. A little trick, what you need to do to put your wire in when you first load your uh, welder up with the new wire you'll feed it through the line and I'll show you how that hooks up since I've got the gun in my hand there's the wire coming out the end of the nozzle now you need to take this brass tip off the end that I just showed you here unscrew it and it took about I would guess 20 seconds for the wire to feed through I was a little nervous being the first time that it was doing it I didn't want to have bird's nest wire tangle inside the welder so I just kept you know, doing a little bit and look, make sure it was turning. So the feature on this welder is that this is a screw-on tip and apparently uh, the non-screw-on tips can pop off after, I don't know. This 180-220 welder, it's a 220 volt, comes with the plug already hooked on. See, it's just uh, a complete unit, you don't have to put a tip on the end inside the door flips up and this is the spool that it came with I put it on already what you want is to have this so that the wire circles and it goes in a straight line so it doesn't come from the bottom and kink and uh, make sure it you know it feeds through here when you start your machine you pull your trigger and this spool will start to turn and You'll have to get it in the roller for it to turn, I think. And you hook your ground up on the bottom where you want that. There is a chart on the door. What does it tell us? Well, this is for the flux core arc welding. So that's the NR211. That's the one that's on here. So it doesn't need gas. If you're going to weld 14 gauge, it tells you to put your spool feed dial on 2 and your voltage on B. That's on the front of the machine. I'll show you again right here. Set that on 2, this on B, and you're away. And from there you'll have to learn how to weld. In this package it included a gas regulator and the connecting hose. This is the gas wire it's the L56 and your size is on there for what size you'll be buying this is what they give you I think it's two pounds I'm not sure and this is the spool for attaching bigger wire spools on 
I think you can put it 11 pound, I don't know, I'll find out later. Included in my kit was a soapstone with a metal holder so that you don't break your soapstone when you set it down. For marking your weld, it comes with a wire brush. Why? Well, I found out that it's not as easy to weld with a MIG as it is a stick welder when it comes to rusty metal or painted metal. I've been welding for many years with a stick welder. It doesn't matter how much paint's on there, burn it, bang, it's gone, it's in. With this here, it, you can't do that. You've got to clean things up. So, uh, if you're doing new metal, no problem. If you're a little bit lazy like me, a little bit of a problem. I guess we just deal with it. I also got this auto darkening solar powered Lincoln welding helmet that came along in my package as well. You'll need to read the manual for your settings as well as we need to read the manual for the welder learning how to weld. There's only 11 pages so you won't learn a whole lot. I also got a pair of Lincoln gloves, long leather gloves to protect your arms from slag, from picking up hot metal or from the rays of the welder burning you. There's a little package included with extra tips in different sizes plus roller uh, wheels for your different size wire that you feed through and the nozzle for the gas. When you're doing gas welding you'll need to put this brass nozzle on. The inside can get the splatter to plug it and then the gas won't flow up properly and when the gas can't protect the weld then you're going to get poorer weld and this could eventually even plug if you don't clean it after uh, I'd say every time you every day you use the weld to clean that out before you put it away. To help keep it clean they sell a nozzle gel. This is the only thing that did not come with the unit is this nozzle gel and that was uh, something I picked up on my own. This welder did not come with these bottles but I bought this from these bottles from a professional welder. Uh, this is the mix of argon and, and uh, oxygen, I forget what it is, it's, it's the 25% mix. That's for welding mild steel. I also bought the bottle that is pure argon and that is for welding aluminum and I think stainless steel although I'm not certain but regardless at least I know what the argon was for because when I heard both bottles were for sale I didn't know why but I bought them both and I'm glad I did because I'd like to go on and do aluminum as well. When I put the bottles in the vehicle the welder of course was there who I bought it from I showed him my little Lincoln 180 and he said this is a good machine he said you should have lots of fun and good time uh, welding with it so he approved of it. If you're thinking of getting a welder this here is not a 110 it's a 220. You need a dryer outlet plug or a 220 plug to operate this machine. The advantage is it gives you uh, more steady power. Where we live the power tends to fluctuate a little bit and I don't like that. So uh, yeah, it's a little more inconvenient, but for me it's going to be fine because I don't intend on taking this out in the field. If you do, you can use a generator of 7,500 watts and this, it'll run this out anywhere you go then, but uh, it's up to you. Have fun and see where your welding takes you. This is the welder I got from Canadian Tire and I got a really good deal.